Good evening, you're tuned in to our television and this is the State of Business. I'm Nishana Pigera. As usual, a look at the headlines first. Sri Lanka Economic and Investment Conclave 2017 concludes on a positive note and tourism authorities to position Sri Lanka as a top wedding destination in the region. The Sri Lanka Economic and Investment Conclave 2017 was concluded in Colombo today. The two-day event was organized by the Colombo Chamber of Commerce in collaboration with the Federation of Industry and Commerce of China, Indian Chamber of Commerce and Tribe International Private Limited, the Strategic, Legal and Corporate Consultants. The Sri Lanka Economic and Investment Conclave is an international event which brings together over 200 participants for an opportunity to share economic and investment opportunities in Sri Lanka. It also aims to create and strengthen investment partnerships with China, the USA, Netherlands, Switzerland, Dubai, Japan and Hong Kong. The main mission of the SCIC is to facilitate participation in economic opportunities that are available in Sri Lanka and to attract sustainable and commercially viable investment opportunities to the country. This year the conclave included a wide range of plenary sessions and short presentations that will provide ample opportunities for learning and sharing experience. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony yesterday, the Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, partly Champika Ranamaka, stated that at present the government is in the process of encouraging genuine and serious investors to invest in Sri Lanka's major infrastructure projects while strengthening public-private partnerships. The minister also highlighted the importance of maintaining the economic relationship between China and Sri Lanka. This is what the new government is keen on doing by encouraging genuine and serious investors to invest in our major infrastructure projects. These projects are necessarily associated with our modern smart city concept where we have planned our infrastructure to suit the modern day requirement with a futuristic aspect in mind and promoting private-public partnership. If we speak about the growth of China, every 26 days it is releasing a total GDP of Sri Lanka to the world economy as its total GDP growth. On the other hand, its total GDP growth in every two years equivalent to the GDP of India. This shows how much powerful economic activity is released by China to the world trade. China has given us many things such as BMICH, Nelumpakuna, Superior Court Complex, Nelumpakuna, etc. And also they have contributed immensely for the development of Sri Lanka, such as Colombo and Hambantota harbors, power stations, highways, airports, port city, etc. Today, China is the largest donor and investor to the Sri Lanka. We all know that President Xi Jinping's program, One Belt, One Road, will ultimately convert a vast area connecting Europe, North Africa, Middle East, South Asia and East Asia to a single greater economic zone. Moreover, China established a Chi Asian Infrastructure Bank to finance infrastructure project of Asia. Not only a landlocked countries, but also the sea lock countries will have good opportunity to engage in more and more economic activities with this novel concept. Sri Lanka should also make use of this opportunity. To meet this situation, we are thinking of a development triangle. This will be Colombo Trinco Corridor, the main corridor, Colombo Hambantara Corridor through a Trinco Mali. We are expecting to reach Myanmar, Bangladesh, Thailand, Vietnam, and China. Through Colombo, we are expecting to open up to Middle East, East Africa, and Europe. Through Hambantota, we are falling up to open towards Asia-Pacific region. At the moment, we have completed the planning conceptually and structurally for Colombo and Western Megapolis, and implementing stage by stage. Trincomalee plan is also structurally and con conceptually completed, and Hambantota conceptual planning is about to begin. We also know that China has contributed immensely for the Colombo, development of Colombo City and we are expecting further funding by Chinese investors. Meanwhile, delivering the opening remarks at the Sri Lanka Economic and Investment Conclave yesterday, Central Bank Governor Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy highlighted the initiatives taken by CBSL and the government in order to strengthen the macroeconomic fundamentals in the country. Historically, Sri Lanka has been a country with stop-go policies. Uh, the main source of instability has been the fiscal deficit, which has pumped excess demand into the system. But the government is now putting in place clear frameworks for macroeconomic management. One, there is a revenue enhancement-based 
fiscal consolidation program, which envisages the fiscal deficit to come down to 3.5% of GDP by 2020. And that program is embedded in the IMF's extended fund facility arrangement that Sri Lanka has agreed to. And uh, not only that, the government is seeking to institutionalize this framework, the fiscal framework, by strengthening the Fiscal Management Responsibility Act by giving it further teeth, whereby the government will be able to deviate from the targets in that Fiscal Responsibility Management Act for very specific reasons, like uh, natural disasters or severe recession, and if they do deviate, they have to set out a path as to how they will revert back within the target. Similarly, on monetary policy, the central bank is introducing a flexible inflation targeting regime, and we are putting in place legal and accountability frameworks to institutionalize that flexible inflation targeting regime, which will be much more data-driven, forward-looking, and proactive than monetary policy in the past. We're also setting in place clear parameters for managing our exchange rate. We don't plan to spend out scarce reserve to defend an exchange rate uh, which, which is indefensible. Speaking further, Governor Kumaraswamy stated that the government has put in place clear strategies when it comes to debt servicing. The governor also noted that the government has taken decisions to use the money that will be obtained from the sale or long-term lease of government assets to pay off a significant portion of the debt. Sri Lanka has the challenge of raising a lot of money. It's a, a peak in its domestic debt repayment next year. But fortunately, in the last five months of this year, we do not have any debt maturities, which is giving us a chance to collect some money to act as a buffer to manage this peak in domestic debt uh, next year. And we are also uh, putting in place a Liability Management Act, which will give us the space to raise money to address the bunching of external debt, which takes place from 2019 onwards. Not only that, the government has also taken a decision to earmark all the proceeds of divestiture, the sale or long lease of government assets. The proceeds will be credited into special accounts which will be earmarked for debt servicing. The Sri Lanka-China Grand Wedding, planned as a tourism promotion event to showcase the country's rich culture, will be held under the patronage of President Maitri Pali Sirisena and the Prime Minister Ranul Vikramasinghe in Colombo on the 17th of December. Megapolis and Western Development Minister Partly Champikaranavaka and Tourism and Christian Affairs Minister John Amartunga will also grace the occasion. It is a, a very important uh, promotion for tourism, particularly uh, for the Chinese nationals. As you know, at the moment, the highest number of tourists that is coming to Sri Lanka are from China and India. This event will stimulate more people from China to come into Sri Lanka. The 100 couples that are getting married in December uh, is not the only event. Every month thereafter, I am told, they will be sending groups of young Chinese uh, men and women to come here and celebrate their marriage and enjoy their honeymoon. As you all know, Sri Lanka is now the most popular destination uh, in South Asia. There is no other country that can offer this diversity. The uh, entrenchment is immense and that uh, these events will undoubtedly attract more Chinese to come into Sri Lanka. We are all aware of the rich richness of the assets and resources of the Chinese people and when they come here, they are high spenders. Very unfortunately this year, we had certain setbacks in the tourism promotion which are natural disasters and some of it were man-made disasters. But now things are quite normal and I think the month of December is going to attract a large number of tour, uh, Chinese tourists in order to swell the numbers where we would be able to exceed the 2.1 million that we had last year. Time for us to slip in for a short break. Do stay with us for more news when we come back. Welcome back. You're watching The State of Business. The Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science has announced their 73rd annual sessions 
which is set to take place from the 4th to the 8th of December in Colombo. This year, the annual sessions will be held under the theme Engagement of Scientists in the Economic Development of Sri Lanka. The ceremonial inauguration will be graced by Minister of Special Assignment, Sarata Murugama. Our association is now completing 73 years of uh, functioning. So it was started in 1944 in Colombo and uh, had grown and most of the scientists, engineers, technologists, medical doctors, agriculturists, all are, were, in, were the pioneers of this association. So if I uh, tell you, now we had uh, famous presidents like Pitya Jodi A. N. S. Kulasinga. Uh, we had uh, so many uh, professors uh, from the un then University of, of Ceylon, later various universities we had professors. Last year we had Professor Manjula Vidhanapatrana. Next year will be Professor Chandra Jayaratna. So we have the leading uh, educational list in this country. Let's take a look at how the stocks perform today after this break. Welcome back to the show. Trading at the Columbus Stock Exchange ended on a mixed note today. The All Share Price Index gained 0.31 points to close at 6,405.53, and the SNPSL 20 index dropped 8 points to close at 3,723.42. Turnover was 800 million rupees, and 16.9 million shares were traded. And now let's take a look at the day's forex rates. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Do join us again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thank you for watching. Good night.